Hello YouTube, this is Keith, Kevin, Ken. I'm Kevin, it's time again for another Pocket Dump Deconstruction. Today I have a special one, so I'm gonna try to go a little faster, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it'll probably be longer than usual, and you know some of these are pretty long. First of all, let's start from the beginning. What you see right there, that right there is today's carry. Keep that in mind because it's going to really be a messy desk of knives when I'm done. Um, some nice knives and we're going to have some fun. I just posted that image five minutes ago on Instagram. Just five minutes ago. Now I've turned my 6S Plus, I, iPhone 6S Plus, from camera to video. And now it's time for the pocket dump deconstruction where we take this thing apart couple of things will happen. Sometimes people do come and say, hey, you're going too long. Here's the deal. It's digital. Stop it. Start it again. With YouTube, you can stop it. You can come back. They'll start it where you stopped it. My fun of doing this every single morning is that I actually get to talk to you guys out loud about what I've been doing in my mind as I go through my four Pelican cases and play with the knives and try to choose uh, what I'm going to have for my pockets. So my fun is to be able to talk to you guys. I am not here to churn out videos five minutes at a time just so I'm churning them out. This is fun for me. So I'm going to continue the fun. I hope you enjoy these videos and take advantage of fast forwarding or whatever the digital does. Okay? So... Uh, to all the folks who say, I go too long, I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to keep the joy in, in playing with my knives. Now, I went too long explaining going too long, so let's <laughs> get going. I have a lot of meetings today at work, and when I do, I usually take my Apple iWatch. I like it. I love that I can sneak a peek on my calendar, even when I'm in the uh, meeting, or I can take a look. You can see I started late. It's already 10 to 10 here on the East Coast. I can do all kinds of stuff um, and, you know, check on my emails and stuff. So that is my Apple iWatch. I'm going to move it off of the desk. That's how many knives we're going to see. Um, I always celebrate the end of a day with a handmade uh, cigar. Usually it's a Cuban cigar. Today, it's I, I, I know I mispronounced this, Vigueros. I love this brand. It's a newer brand. It has this modern packaging, so a lot of people don't even realize it's a Cuban cigar. Um, but, man, it's a wonderful smoke and a short smoke for me. So that's the Vigueros. This is my daily smoke that I'm going to celebrate the day with. The coin, my lucky one-ounce silver coin today is from 2013. Let me get some shade. It is a Chinese flower coin, uh, silver coin. Uh, it is the lunar year, the year of the snake. Um, and I love collecting these. Yes, I'll move them all back later, but I want to get them out the way. Um, vodka. <laughs> so you know <laughs> it's going to be a day full of me meetings. Usually I save my vodka for the weekends. I love vodka and it gives it makes me feel good, but uh vodka this time around. Now let's talk about the knives. Uh, all three of these knives have something in common and we'll get to that later. Um that that is my Mont Blanc, uh, one of my Mont Blanc fin wallets. And, man, I need to wake up. That one hour of daylight savings time just knocked me out this whole week. I don't know if it's just me or is it everyone. Um, but, man, I've been just slogging through the day just because of the, I lost one hour. Anyway, um, so I have my loud field guides, my loud orange field guides. The knives, all of these knives have pairings. And I'll tell you, I, I was looking at my small keychain knife and thinking about what to carry. And the knife that got away is the small knife. But once I got the small knife and started thinking about Spydeco and the knife that they created, um, 
first, before they got to the keychain knife, I just went through my cases and started talking about Spydeco and pairings and all of that stuff. So we're going to show you some pairings today. Um, hey, this is about you following my weird mind and what people do when they have four huge Pelican cases full of knives. So anyway, this is a wonderful knife. This is, for my keychain, again, I needed something to wake me up. The other ones are just dull. <laughs> okay, sharp knives dull when it comes to color. This one I need to wake me up because I see my keychain knife more than anything else. Um, this is a wonderful knife. This is the Spydeco USN version of the Ladybug. They made a Hawk version of the Ladybug for the USN folks and it has H1 steel. Spydeco H1 steel cannot rust. Cannot rust. So if you really work around water or if it's raining or whatever, it does not rust. Now, I promised one of the viewers who commented and said, hey, you're going to do an H1 mini collection that I would. And then later I said, hey, when I responded, I said, you know, what I'll probably do is the next time I do an H1 blade, I'll just bring out all my H1s. Well, this is the next time I'm doing an H1 blade, and I'm not bringing out all my H1s, so I apologize for that. Today, it's all about pairings, and there is a pairing to this. This is, again, same ladybug dimensions for a keychain knife, but Spydeco every year does a number of knives for that great knife group, USN, and they, they decided to do ladybugs with this green and black blade. H1 cannot, it's waterproof steel, it cannot uh, rust, and I love this hawk blade. Plain blade is what I'm carrying today. Of course, they have that ridges. These little Spydeco hawk blades, let me tell you, especially with that spidey edge, that Spydeco edge, that, that serrated edge, man, these little things are dangerous, okay? <laughs> They can help you a little in a pinch. I know they're small, but they're really nice. And that strong back lock. I really love this knife. That's the pairing. That's the special Spydeco. This is my carry for keychain. Special Spydeco pair of um, Ladybugs Hawk blades with that wonderful Spydeco H1 steel. My medium carry is the most recent Chris Reeve knife, and that is the Nkosi. Oh, man. You know, it is a perfect carry size. It's a little smaller than a small Sabenza 21. A little smaller than a small Sabenza 21. Um, man, it has that big pivot. This is all tied. It's a plain Jane right now. They do have a limited edition. I think he did like 25 with um, colorful scales, etch scales. They went for $2,500 a piece because they're so limited. Um, but this is the Plain Jane in Kosi. In Kosi and Zulu is Chief, and uh, Chris Reeve is South African. That's why it's in Kosi. Um, the blade is, S, uh, is S35VN steel, which is most of the modern... Chris Reeve knives are that way. Oh, man. It's just a perfect knife. It's so small. It's a perfect EDC knife. Now, why is that part of the pairs? Because, listen, I don't care what anyone says. This is a small Chris Reeve Sabenza 25. He doesn't call it small 25. He calls it the Nkosi. And I'm sure there's reasons he calls it the Nkosi and not the small 25. But let me tell you something. That's a small 25. See it? tutorials, look at that blade profile, look at the little notch right up on the jimping. Yes, it does. It has two blue studs. It's really wonderful. The clip is placed a little differently because it's small. He wanted it out of the way of the lock bar, but what a wonderful knife. The Nkosi, the Chief, the Sabenza 25 celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Sabenza. Sabenza means work. Both of these are great work pieces and beautiful as well. 
This is the medium carry, the Nkosi. I'm, I call it the little 25, because you want to know something? It's the little 25. <laughs> I'm sure someone, some knife nerd, and you know what? God bless you. I like knife nerds. I love people who have a passion for their things. Probably have a list of 30 reasons why it's not a small Sabenza 25 against my one reason. It looks exactly like it. It's built exactly like it. So <laughs> that is my medium carry, though. What a great medium carry. And this, oh, man, I don't carry it enough. I'll tell you, these two I could carry every single day. <sighs> I'll tell you. This is, and yes, I'm going to butcher names. I always butcher names. This is the Spydeco Slow, uh, Sly, <sighs> I rehearsed this. S L Y S X. Uh, Bowie. It's the Bowie, the newer Bowie. Uh, it is really just a wonderful knife. Spartaco only has two Bowies that I know of, uh, a newer Bowie. One reason is the Bowie shape has this traditional top that, you know, is hard to incorporate that Spartaco hole without bumping up the blade, and in this case, they don't bump it up, and it's just wonderful. Oh, man, I like that stone wash. It's so perfect. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I really like this. CTS, XHP, Carpenter Steel, 3.4-inch blade. Does it look a little familiar? Yes, it has that Bowie shape. And that's why it's the Bowie. Well, it's by the same creator that created this. Partners! <laughs> and that is, of course, the Spyderco Techno. That's Spyderco's big brother. The, obviously, the, the blade profile is different because this is a Bowie blade, but everything else is the same. Look at it. Built tough and wonderful. Uh, the Techno is that little fat guy. Bigger than, of course, the Bowie um, has that exact same Carpenter Steel CTS XHP Steel. Man, yes, fatter stock, but that's because it is a stubby knife. It has that Chris Reeve integral, oh man, that beautiful Chris Reeve integral frame lock. Look, they both have that wire clip. Oh, man, I'll tell you, the stone washing that Spydeco does is just great. It just hides everything. It's perfect. And, yes, this is very smooth. So you say, oh, it's just smooth G10, but it has this, man, this 3D kind of molding around it. It has this round molding. It's just great. I really love it. This is the pairing. That is the maker, and they made both. The Big Daddy that just came out last year. And, of course, one of my top ten, the Spyderco Techno. Smooth as silk, too. Oh, man. What a wonderful carry. What a wonderful carry. It's just nice. That low profile helps when you're carrying it in the pocket, too, especially if you carry two knives like I do. Man, this is really wonderful. Ah. So that's pears. I keep talking about pears. I really do. Here's the knife that got away, and then we're going to get into our pear. Oh, by the way, this is my big carry. <laughs> this is the keychain carry. My medium, my medium carry is the Encose. There's the coin, my lucky coin, lunar snake. Here's my cigar. And I have the Apple Watch. That, my friends, is my carry and a couple of the relatives. That's what I have on Instagram. But you want to know what? This ain't Instagram. Yes, I've been carrying. I'm going to move these off while I talk. I've been carrying a, uh, as my keychain knife, the Cricut, a lot because it's just a perfect keychain knife. It is. It has that, I tell you about that reverse S uh, belly. I, I tell you about that all the time. I literally have 
eight of these. I, the reason I tell you about that S-shaped body, and I'm going to show you some of the older ones. That's the one you're probably most familiar with is the stainless steel. This is an FRN, fiberglass reinforced nylon. Oh, man. Again, that reverse S with that spotty uh, uh, edge. Oh, I'll tell you, it's important to know about this. That is a real defensive blade shape, but in this small, small package. This FRN is one of the older Spydeco crickets. You can tell the older, this is VG10. You, first, you can tell by the blade stock, because this is ATS55, one of the older blades. But you can also tell when you turn it over. You see... Still stainless, it's also, for the more modern ones, it's a frame lock. See that? For the older ones, it's a liner lock. Only the older ones have the liner lock. FRN. Why am I going back? I'll show you in just a few moments when I show you what the little cricket came from. And this, my friends, is the first cricket. Oh, man, I was so blessed to find this in perfect condition. This is what, this is what Sal wanted. He said it's supposed to do three things. First, it's supposed to be, he takes his larger, and we'll talk about that, reverse S style. He adds a little bit more belly to it because for this knife, you want to be able to use that belly to do a lot of cutting. And then you have that tip of the reverse S that can open up boxes and do all of that. He wanted it to feel like a smooth rock. You know those skimming rock? The perfect skimming rock. <laughs> if you can imagine that perfect, look, I'm rubbing it because I grew up uh, in Ohio and we had Milk Creek Park that had a lot of lakes and we would always skim the rocks uh, across the lake skimming and the other is the yin and yang that japanese yin and yang this is the very first one. Oh man it's just really a nice piece look at that back spacer look at that oh is that beautiful or what i always get emotional when i get the older pieces especially when they're in just great shape now that little knife really came out from what <laughs> Sal Glasser, the founder of Spydeco, came up with. And this, my friends, is the civilian. This is the civilian. Sal started this from scratch to do a self-defense knife. Okay? This was created for self-defense. Before this knife came out, the civilian... Spydeco, and they still concentrate on everyday working knives. But they do have these reverse S knives that are very, very, very tactical. This is the most tactical. In fact, in 1992, it won the Blade Magazine Design Award. This is the original civilian, folks. This is the original civilian. This is the one you're probably used to. The, the current one with G, black G10 scales, that back lock. Oh, man. VG10 steel. The original has G2 stainless steel, one of the earlier stainless steels. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> this, um, look at the clip. Oh, I really love it. Again, this is to rip you up. Uh, you could tell that, <laughs> how it's created. Uh, the belly is not as pronounced as with the cricket, but it is, in case you missed the tip, you could really do some damage with it. Oh, man. The grip, to make sure they had a really good grip, he came up with this, what they call Creighton. K-R-A-T-O-N. And put it as an inlay, but really covered it a lot, even on the clip, so that you could really have a grip. 
to it, even if your hands were sweaty. It's kind of, it feels like rubber. And I know that downgrades whatever uh, Kraton is, but it's really nice. The reason I bring out this big, some of you are saying, why are you bringing out that big hunk of hunk of blade, Kevin? That big defensive blade. You were just talking about the cricket. Because Sal actually created the cricket from this. <laughs> he took the design from this big tactical blade that was created to be a tactical blade. Plain and simple. No excuses. That's what this was made for. That's why it's called civilian. Okay? It's for a civilian protection or police protection, any kind of protection. And then he came up with this. <laughs> from this, he wanted something that people could, from this shape, could use on a daily basis, but also could do a little damage. But it was taking this design and making this so that it could fit in a woman's hand or any of our hands. It disappears in these fat Michelin man hands, but in a woman's hand as well, but very functional. You guys know it's one of my favorite blades. I have eight different variations, and we will do a mini collection. I have a bunch of hawk blade knives. We'll do a mini collection on that. But, man, to have the first of both of those as brothers, uh, I, I'm really, I really love it. And, of course, the newer civilian as well. I'm going to go through these real quick examples of Spyderco. They do that a lot. They do this teaming up a lot. Hey, here's the Sage 2 carbon fiber. You know the deal with Sage, right? Sage with S35 VN steel, my wonderful clip, that Spyderco leaf blade. Yes, it's, it's <laughs> everyone knows the Sage. A lot of people don't talk about my chaparrales. Again, the chaparrales are smaller a series that comes from Spydeco um, that's just a smaller version, really a smaller version of this Sage series. Same clip. The difference is this is a back lock, but of course, as you know, with the Sage series, they are representing all of the famous knife makers who created locks for folding knives. In this case, the Sage 2 represents the liner lock. But other than that, perfect brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters series. Let me tell you, if you love the Sage series, you should check out the Chaparral series. Little smaller, perfect EDC knives. Look, Sage is the perfect EDC knife, <laughs> period. Um, but the Chaparral, I really like it. It's EDC and gentleman knife. Domino, you can tell by that ugly scale, can't you? Oh, the domino flipper from Spydeco. Man. And of course, the little brother, the dice. Look, exactly the same. Nice little flippers, brothers. I love how Spydeco does that. You know, they get a wonderful knife that's selling well, and then they listen to people talking to them. And a lot of times people say, you know, I love that Lion Spy. <laughs> I just love that collaboration. It is so wonderful. Elmac Steel, that G10 with that texture. You turn it over with the titanium and that wonderful, man, that wonderful Lion Steel a lock. It's just wonderful. Ah, look at that clip, the lion steel clip, right? They say, oh, yes, why don't we do the little lion steel, uh, lion spy, sorry, the little lion spy, and they do. Same exact everything, the dimensions, what it looks like, everything except smaller. That's the little Lion steel. But what, what am I talking about? The little lion spy. Little. L-I-L. Lion spy. Yes, I'm running out of desk space. I know. I know. I know. 
And of course, the ultimate, ultimate example of what Spyderco does a lot when they get great knives and then they do a different pairing is the Endora. <sighs> Just the perfect EDC knife. Big EDC knife. Of course, this usually you get an Endora and VG10. Of course, I'm showing off my new knives, right? <laughs> this is the Burnt Orange Hap 40 Sus. That Hap 40 blade sandwiched into the SUS 410 stainless slabs. Oh. Let's all say it together. And what's its relative? Of course, the Delica. They have a big knife that everyone loves. It does a lot of work. So let's get a smaller one. Easier in the pocket. Easier for EDC. And they came up with the Delica. And it became a huge bestseller. Of course, this is a Delica Burnt Orange Hap 40 SUS 410. By the way, I know I put away money for knives because I'm, I'm that kind of a collector. But if you have the money, grab some of these Hap 40 SUS 410 blades in the burnt orange. Be careful. There is a dark orange version of a lot of these knives that doesn't have this blade type. But it's a special blade. It's a sprint run, which means it's going to go away. They only did a thousand of each of them. A thousand or less. So grab them now because I'll tell you, if you wait and they get discontinued because they're all sold out, they're going to cost a lot in the years to come. Trust me on that. Now, those are a bunch of pairings. I just want to give you an example of what Spyderco does. I'm not done because two of the most anticipated, actually I have about five anticipated blades for 2016 coming from Spyderco. I have in my collection, they're waiting for their brother <laughs> to be delivered. This is the medium lum <laughs> Japanese folder. This lum, uh, Bob Lum design Japanese folder is a sprint rum. It has the incision handle, that glass fiber weave uh, in that incision pattern. And incision is the name of a silk Japanese kimono. This is the medium. There's also a large lum folder. They are coming out with the little lum. L-I-L lum. Just like the little lion spy. So look for that. That's coming this year. You'll be able to see it on this channel because I'm going to get that. I can't wait. And then this was just a surprise for me. I'm holding off showing it to you because I'm holding this knife. I love it. It's one of my all-time favorites. And when Eric Glasser, the son of Sal, <sighs> introduced this at Chalk Show, I literally lost it, okay? Oh, <laughs> the Valadin, thick Valadin, smooth G10, steel bolsters. Oh, man. Those full bolsters, they are skeletonized, but you feel the weight in that. Oh, I love it. Oh. Um, they have the two studs that is part of that blade stop. Look at, the, look at that modified Tonto kind of uh, tip. They got a little one coming out. They didn't say what the name was, but it looks exactly like this, but small. I saw the prototype. It's beautiful. That's coming. Again, you get a great knife. You get your folks saying, I love it. You get the customer saying, I love it. And you make a smaller one. There you have it, folks. Messy desk. But I wanted to bring out a lot of knives, but also show you this pairing that goes on constantly from the beginning with the cricket and the civilian all the way to today with the Bowie and the Techno. Thank you very much, you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Click that subscri subscribe button so that YouTube lets you know Whenever I post a video, no matter what it is, a deconstruction or a small collection video, 
We want to grow this family so we can continue the discussion. Thank you all for all your comments. I'm getting back to all of them. So keep those coming. Thumb this up as this, if this is the right direction. We'll continue to talk about the deconstruction every single day, every single day. And I'm going to continue to show you how wacko, look, how wacko my mind is as I go through <laughs> those four Pelican cases. Thanks a lot, you guys. I really appreciate you. You have a perfect day. Keep those pockets full. Goodbye.